So this is starting part three of my build along. Now once you've gotten these side pieces cut out for the overlays, I'm going to take them and glue them onto some heavier card. This is uh, actually watercolor uh, paper. It's about 18 to 20 thousandths thick. Uh, it's 300 GSM grams per square meter. And I notice a difference in the format here. <laughs> I'm going to take this video straight off of my camera, yeah, including the sound. So that roaring that you hear in the background is from my furnace fan, because that's also air conditioning and it's running constantly, pretty much. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking some stick glue. This is just the Elmer's all-purpose uh, all glue stick. And I'm applying that onto the heavier card. I generally put it on a heavy card because it has less tendency to curl and warp from the moisture. Even though there's not a lot of moisture in this glue, it's still will tend to pucker the paper. Uh, I put quite a bit on. You want to get it well covered with uh, no gaps. Then I'm going to carefully lay my overlay pieces on top. And press them down. After I get these initially placed, I'll come back with my roller. And roll it down securely. The roller I use, well, I use two of them actually. Because I just happen to have two. And this one was an old... Actually, it's a veneering roller that I bought years and years ago when I used to do some woodworking. It's used to roll down veneer. Pretty much the same thing I'm doing here with paper. I guess you could call this a paper veneer. Um, but you want to roll it down so that it makes good contact with the substrate. Now you're saying, well, why are you gluing that on there anyway? Well, I decided that these sidewalls would look better if the pilasters stood proud of the surface uh, a little more than just a single layer of cardstock. So I'm adding this heavier backing paper to make them stand out. Now that has to, has to dry. <clears throat> and then once it's uh, pretty well dried, I'll cut out the background between the image. So I'll be cutting out these areas here and trimming it to the edges so that we can glue this over top of the sidewall. And the reason this is not all glued together yet into a box is because I want to be able to lay this down flat. And after I glue these pieces, after I cut them out, I'm going to put them on there and glue them with some, some uh, PVA glue or white glue, whatever you want to call it. And because that takes <clears throat> a while to set, I want to put a, a weight or a heavy weight over the top of this and that will t help to keep the wall flat 
and the glue will also uh, act to reinforce the, <coughs> the wall much like a glue in a plywood would, a piece of plywood. Okay, so that's what we're up to today. So if you're following along with your build of, of my version, <coughs> I'm going to do this and cut out these walls. Now you can use a different thickness for the backer, or you could use no backer. If you don't really want a lot of offset in these pilasters, just use your single layer of cardstock and cut them, cut them out. And after these openings here are all cut out, don't forget to come back with your marker uh, and edge around the inside of the opening so that you don't see that cut line. Okay, we're also going to make a layer for the end walls, much the same way we did for the side wall. But here, it's going to be a slightly different because the only place there's a pilaster is right on the very edges. And so I'm just going to carefully cut down along that edge of that pilaster and also on this side and this this side is a bit more difficult to pick out but it's there okay and this will this piece here is going to be cut out completely I want to double up the thickness where the blue paneling is just like on the side walls because the paneling actually sits over top of the pilasters so it sticks out just as far okay cut out the door openings the spot. That furnace fan's shut down so it's not quite so noisy. Okay now here I'm going to use that straight edge. We're going to cut along this the edge of where the paneling goes. And we're going to cut down along the side. And the last cut will be across the bottom. And actually, we're only going to be cutting out these two edges here. But we can draw our knife all the way across. Okay. So that's going to be our end wall overlay. And again, I'm going to take this and I'm going to glue it onto the heavier card. And what I'm gonna, since I would like to get this all on one card, what I'm going to do is uh, position this in such a way that I can overlap this piece. At least I'm going to try anyway. We'll see how that works out.
Now you can see why I suggest that you print multiple copies of each page. Uh, I've probably already gone through about four on this little bit of building that, build that I've done so far. Uh, print copies are cheap. If you're doing them on a home printer, that is. Even if you have to go to a print shop somewhere to have it printed up, I suggest that you get probably a, at least four copies of each page, of each plate printed. Just to have in case you uh, make a mistake and then also because it gives you the extra pieces that you need for layering. So that's what I do. And obviously if you're using a home printer and you get working on your project and you find out that you messed something up, you can always go back and reprint that page and start it over again. Now your end walls, whoops, <laughs> I don't have this cut quite through here. Forgot something. If you ever have an instance like this where you don't have it cut completely to the corner, just go back and re-cut that piece. And you'll be able to tell, because <laughs> it won't come off the sheet cleanly. Uh, don't just take it and pull it to try to tear it away because it'll it'll make mess up the corner here something awful okay so here we have our two end walls cut out and I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to edge these edges like I did on, on the other one um, actually I should probably put this on the backer first but you need to make sure that these cut edges don't show up white. I just want to make it's very difficult to do this edge coloring after you have assembled your project. Whoops. So always try to do it beforehand, before assembly, and do it from the back surface, back edge, back side, if you will, of your print. Because if your marker happens to wander off the mark, it slips out on the surface. Like there, oops, oops. You don't ruin your print. Okay, so you always want to mark these edges from the back side of your print. And I usually try to flip it around a couple times to make sure that I got everything. OK. 
Okay, we'll come back to this in a little while after this glue sets. Uh, and we're going to glue these onto the same card. Hopefully they'll both fit. Yeah, it's going to be snug. <laughs> Well, I might just get another sheet. <laughs> Paper's not very expensive, so. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, we'll come back after the glue sets, like I said, and we'll glue these in place. And then we'll cut out this page with the backer. And then we'll proceed to glue that over top of our walls that we had previously cut and folded and this is the other side wall we have to do this as well now like I said why didn't I glue this together well because I want to lay it flat and after I glue that other piece on I want to put a, a weight over top of it like a heavy book or something of that nature until the glue sets so that you don't get any warping now already this is stiffer than just a single sheet would be because we have it doubled up with our window doubler on the back side. Now we're going to glue this on top yet and then we're going to cut just the blue metal portion. We're going to cut that out of another print. Okay. So we have to go back to one of our prints again. We're going to cut out just the blue metal part and we're going to glue that <laughs> over top of here so that there will there will be a definition between the blue metal and the pilaster underneath it of course since metal is not very thick I'm just going to use the uh, single layer of cardstock on the print and glue that over top of this. Then after that's all glued to the side, then we can take and assemble our structure into a box. You're going to find it's, it's pretty weak, it's primarily because of the big cutouts uh, in the ends for the doors. And you're also going to find it It doesn't look very realistic because the door frame is going to be very thin. So what I'm going to do on this instance is before I glue the doors in, I'm going to cut a piece of heavy card, uh, like from a cereal box card or something of that nature, a, a, a relatively heavy piece of, of uh, chipboard and we're going to glue that on the inside surface right over top of this or behind it if you will then we're going to cut out that door opening in that card and that heavy chipboard and that will stiffen up this wall and it will also inset the door which will make the wall appear thicker and it'll also strengthen those walls quite a bit because right now they're very floppy. Now I could have also done that on the side walls if I wanted to have more inset on the windows like as though they were set back in the wall further I would have used a heavier card glued into the onto the back side of here and then cut out the window openings and then glued our window sheet behind that yet and that could have increased the thickness of the wall. Remember we're trying to deal with two issues here. The structural uh, integrity of the building itself and also the visual appearance because the more uh, layers that we can put on there, the, the definition that we can provide 
uh, will just make the building look that much better. So join me a little later, we'll come back to this.